Diosdado Cabello, who is the president of Venezuela's National Assembly, has come forward revealing that the Venezuelan government has just broken up a plot to overthrow the government and to assassinate Venezuelan president Nicolas Maduro. Several people in the military have been arrested. In fact, a recorded statement intended to be played after the coup had taken place had also been seized. Now, this video was scheduled to be played either in uh, Miami or in uh, Caracas itself. A major plot has been uncovered to overthrow the government and assassinate, assassinate Nicolas Maduro. And on top of this, not only has the usual U.S. connections been found, but also connections to the Canadian government and the U.K. Evidence shows connections with the Canadian RCMP and the entire basically diplomatic corps of the UK which is in Venezuela right now. What happened was they are they were made aware that this incident was going to take place, that this coup was going to be attempted, and they asked for information regarding access to transportation like flights out of the country and whatnot. Computers that have been seized by these military personnel uh, contain the locations that were intended to be attacked on the day of the coup, which include not only the you know the presidential palace but actually tell the the uh, the media company in the country as well. On Wednesday, opposition leaders Leopoldo Lopez and Maria Corina Machado and Antonio Mismenda released a transition plan which involved the privatization of the country's oil, deregulation of the economy, and accords with international financial institutions, including the International Monetary Fund. As a Canadian, I find it very interesting that the RCMP has been found connected to this attempted coup. And we should not be surprised at all. Stephen Harper has been the biggest threat to Canadian democracy since uh, any of the, you know, the Nazis ever placed during World War II. And even then, it was very questionable how much power they could have demonstrated. But very clearly, here we see the Canadian government under Stephen Harper playing an active role in subverting the democracy and planning assassinations against foreign leaders who have not done what it is that they want them to do. Stephen Harper has been a tremendous threat to freedom of speech inside of Canada. The, the recent bill that's been tabled, uh, C-51, fundamentally threatens the rights and freedoms of Canadian citizens. So I do not find it odd in any way, shape, or form that the Canadian government was found to have a hand in an attempted coup in Venezuela. Occasionally have to twist the arms of countries that wouldn't do what we need them to do. This is all, of course, a part of a larger strategy that has been going on against the Venezuelan government by the United States. There have been multiple attempts to coup the government, which, fortunately, up until now, the Venezuelan government have managed to avoid. Uh, they've been able to stop them before they actually happen. Now, this has been going on for years now. And it is the fault of Venezuelan President Nicolas Maduro for not properly coming down on the people who are responsible for this. President Obama, in a recent speech, already made it very clear how he intends to deal with Venezuela and other countries who do not follow U.S. interests. Right now, Maduro, enough is enough. At this point now, these ongoing hostilities are your fault because you are not standing up to those in the country who are trying to subvert your democracy to undo the gains of Venezuelan, the Venezuelan 21st century socialism. There comes a time when you have to realize it's necessary to walk into these opposition headquarters jail the people who are running them, take every single person that you know is connected to the U.S. government, march them out and put them on trial. Hell, don't even give them a trial. Just shoot them in the head and throw their bodies in a ditch for all I care. The fact is, all of this is continuing to happen because you won't take the steps necessary to end it. Stop playing with this bourgeois parliamentarianism. Stop going with bourgeois conceptions of freedoms and rights. Go with socialist conceptions of freedoms and rights. 
There is a huge contradiction between the people and the enemy, and not among the people themselves. That is the enemy. Go out there, smash them, kill them, get rid of them. Because right now, they're running around Venezuela, killing people, threatening the country, hoarding food, causing skyrocketing prices. The, the economic uh, warfare, the economic terrorism that you yourself have previously described. You've gotten to end this. Stop playing by, you know, bu- with the bourgeois legal apparatus. End it. Become a real communist. Become a socialist. Shut these guys down. Get rid of them. Because if you don't, the country is going to fall apart. There has to be revolution. There is no peaceful transition. And as long as you let this keep going on, you keep proving us right that there has to be a revolution, not a democratic reform. Because the very system itself is designed to preserve bourgeois privilege and power. And until you stand up to that and finally end it, this is going to keep happening. The coup plotters had planned to overthrow the elected government of President Nicolas Maduro with a campaign of violence. From January 6th through January 8th, coup plotters planned to conduct nationwide protests aimed at fomenting unrest in the streets. In the rest of January, they hoped the country would descend into a state of turmoil, paving the way for the violent overthrow of the Maduro administration. On February 3rd, officials at the U.S. Embassy in Caracas attempted to bribe people close to the Venezuelan government to participate in a coup. The coup was scheduled to begin on February 12th. The first targets were to be Chavista and opposition marches commemorating Youth Day. Strategic sites across Caracas were to be bombed. Members of both the opposition and the government were expected to be assassinated. Media outlets would be forced to broadcast a statement announcing the collapse of the government. By February 13th, the coup government expected to be firmly in control of the country and free to roll back Venezuela's socialist revolution. If you like this video and you'd like to see more of them, then head over to my Patreon page and show your support. Or you can go to the MRN bookstore and check out some of the latest books available. Don't forget to rate, comment, subscribe, and share on various social media.